your source for everything paranormal. Para X. The views expressed and the opinions given by the individual host and their guests do not necessarily reflect those of Para X, its affiliates, or its sponsors. Stirring the Cauldron here on the Para-X Radio Network. Now, you were just listening to some forest elf music called Elven Night. And tonight is Elven Night on Stirring the Cauldron because my guest is Michael J. Love. And he's here to talk about his book, The Elven Way, The Magical Path of the Shining Ones, written by the Silver Elves. Now, The Elven Way describes the mystical, magical, and spiritual path of the elf folk and their connection to the Shining Ones, who are their guides, guardians, ancient kindred, and the source of enlightenment. If you have any questions for Michael, and by the way, his elf name is Ardoa, um, please send me a private message here at the Para-X chat room, and I'll pass it on. And just a reminder for those of you who may not be in the chat but are listening and you do have a question, you can always pop over and join us, www.para-x.com. So, let's get started. Zardoa, welcome to the show. Glad to be here. I think this is going to be interesting, and and I've got so many questions that I hope we can get them all in by the time the hour is over, because it does go fast. Um, I love to answer questions. Well, you know, that, and that's the thing. People are always saying, gee, do you mind if I ask this question? Do you mind if I don't? You know, when it comes to witches and stuff. And we, all of us, embrace questions because that's how people learn. And if they're curious enough to ask, um, we're all happy to answer, right? I believe so. Mm-hmm. All right, so there's a quote in the book that states, um, 
we call it the Elven Way, but we could call it the Fairy Way, the Fair Way, the Way of the Fae, the Way of the Shining Ones, or even the way that begins in your dreams and ends in the life magical. Now, there, I did a little research. There are eight recognized families of fairies. There are elves, dwarves, pixies, gnomes, gremlins, goblins, sprites, and demons. So let's begin by explaining to those who may not be familiar about elves in general and then the silver elves in particular? Well, I think there's a lot more classifications of elf and fairy folk than yeah. eight. I mean, there's right. a vast variety. Mm-hmm. And it, in a certain sense, it's always growing. Um, yeah. We are an evolutionary people. We're constantly uh, changing, growing, mutating, and developing, and there's new varieties of elves uh, popping up all the time. Mm -hmm. So those are just, that's a very kind of limited (laughs) way of looking at it. Yeah. And uh, there's a whole lot more to it. Uh, Even if you look at some of the old books on um, fairy lore, you'd get a whole lot more variety than that. Mm Mm-hmm. And and so, um, but you are, um, well, Silver Elves in particular is the, I don't know how to say it, um, like in which terms would Silver Elves be considered a coven, so to speak, like we have? Um, I suppose in a way, um, we were first awakened by the Elf Queen's Daughters in 1975, who were a kind of a elven Wiccan group, and mm-hmm. we were part of them. Mm-hmm. And we didn't call them covens, so we called our different little groups vortexes. Okay. Which is in many ways a traditional elven way of looking at things. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were the uh, elves of the southern woodlands at that time is what we called ourselves and then we moved to Florida and we called ourselves the Sylvan Elves and then we moved to California and we started calling ourselves the Silver Elves. <laughs> and now you're in Hawaii and, and, and it's still the Silver Elf, right? <laughs> yes, it, that one kind of stuck. Uh-huh. Sometimes it just needs to go through a couple of transformations before it's really, you know, the one that fits perfectly. It yeah. got to a point where it'd be confusing for people if we kept changing all the time. So <laughs> Very true. And, uh, in deference to those who knew us, we we stuck with that one. Mm-hmm. Now, okay, so who are the Shining Ones? Well, the Shining Ones are elf fairy folk who have been through what we've been through, are going through at this moment, and have evolved beyond that. They are simply advanced spiritual beings, advanced powers, advanced spirits in the world, in the universe, who uh, sort of like parents or grandparents in a way foster our being and nurture us as we are going through things they more or less went through ages ago. Mm-hmm. Okay, that makes sense. So there... I, suppose in a way, I suppose in a way they'd be equivalent to angels. Mm-hmm. Except that generally when people think of angels, they're like, they were made to be angels and they were never anything else. But in our esoteric philosophy, everyone develops through the process of evolution. Every, every soul kind of starts at the beginning and moves onward. Right. Yeah. Um, all right, there's some questions coming up in the chat room, um, and and I guess a little confusion um, because, and I don't even know how to explain this, but but I'm going to ask the question, and then you can kind of maybe take it from there, um, because I think people are getting the the idea that um, elves are mythical creatures. This is kind of what I'm getting from the questions, as opposed to 
I, I mean, it's, all right, I have to put it back to witches. A lot of people think witches are mythical creatures, but, you know, here I am. I'm not mythical. You know, I mean, I'm flesh and blood. Um, so I think people are thinking perhaps that all fairies and elves and everything are mythical as well. But you're not mythical either, right? <laughs> I mean, it's just... Well, um, there are, of course, elves are mythical uh, creatures in the sense that there are myths about us, mm -hmm. and in that sense there are uh, mythical uh, elves, uh, kind of legendary elves in the sense of you know, Tolkien's whole world of elves is kind of a mythos in its way, but mm -hmm. we are not simply mythical beings. It's, it's strange, but three times in my life I've had somebody come up to me and say, you are a living myth, or some form thereof. Mm -hmm. So we 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 are that, and we are more than that. Uh, we are vast varieties. We're we are real mm -hmm. uh, as well as mythical. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I will ask you the questions as they come in, and then you can kind of feel them and and uh, you know answer the way you see fit. Uh, first one doesn't have anything to do with this. Um, Kimberl Eventide wants to know if the Shining Ones are also known as the Elders. Uh, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Okay. All but right. Our whole race is often called the Elder Race or the Eldar Race, or we are well, called that's... the Elda. Uh huh. I mispronounced our that. Partic our, partic our particular language of Ervindasi, uh, L is I and Da is is or am, so would be saying we are the I ams. Mm -hmm. And we're going to get to that a little bit later in the show, because that, that I found really interesting. Um, so so one of the, the questions was um, about elves being multidimensional. Now, um, that probably goes ties into uh, enchantment, you know, the elven magic. Um, how would you answer well, that? Well, I think, I think multidimensional is just that the vast majority of people are not really aware of that. I mean, we have, mm -hmm. uh, there, most people have a very limited and material spectrum to their consciousness, but there's a whole lot more going on that is Invisible, just for instance, ultraviolet and infrared and other spectrums like that, which exist. You know, there's radio waves flowing through my our apartment right now that mm -hmm. I can't see. There's all kinds mm -hmm. of things going on uh, that exist in the world that are relatively unseen, but which we can become aware of and conscious of. And all of us have possibilities in terms of moving from one parallel world to another according to the decisions we make in our lives. Mm -hmm. Which, the more aware you are of that, the more powerful those steps can be. Right, right. Um, all right, let me get to this other question. Um, what, what she's asking is, what attracts and repels the elven? Um, and, and I said, clarify that for me, too. I, and she said, like, well, what plants and offerings are used to attract them or, or repel them? Are you repelled by certain things? You know, that. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, we're very attracted to pizza. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so am I. <laughs> we're, mm -hmm. we're, we're put off by cruel, unkind people. Right. We don't much care for bigots and uh, those who have strong uh, negative prejudices. We like courtesy. We're attracted to the courteous. We're attracted to the elegant uh, and the uh, um, wondrous. Naturally, we're attracted to the magical. Mm-hmm. We're going to be talking about that, too. I've got all kinds of stuff. Um 
right. Let, let me ask you this though. Um, in which, uh, again, I'm using which terms because that's kind of a, a, a thing that everybody can sort of relate to. That's listening in. Would um, are there solitary elves? that practice on their own as you know because in witchcraft like I happen to be a solitary practitioner I don't belong to a coven well, I think for the most part there are solitary elves out of necessity I don't think there's very many elves who really wish to be solitary what we mm-hmm. hear most often from elves are hey are there any one of elven nature near me Elves generally, and this is not an absolute because we don't have much in the way of absolutes, uh, generally are seeking each other, seeking other elves. But the nature of the world and of the magic that's currently happening is that we have been scattered around the world like little beacons in the world. You know, and as much as we might want to gather together, uh, the Shining Ones have put us here, there, and everywhere in order to attract our, and awaken our kindred. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and I was reading on the website that the Elven Way is the spiritual path of the elves. It's not a religion. All yeah. elves are free to pursue whatever spirituality they desire or don't desire. Um, and that these elves are magicians and follow no particular religious dogma, which sounds quite a bit like the pagan way as well. Um, you talk about being respectful towards all beings, great or small, and understand that the world um, is kind of a magic and miraculous phenomenon, and that all beings, by pursuing their own true path, will become whoever they truly desire to be. And, uh, you know, when we were talking briefly the other day, you mentioned your early background I mean you were you were metaphysical from a very early age just not um, elven right well I was not aware that my nature was elven I was elven I just didn't have that label to put to it at that time uh-huh. but yes I was interested in magic and the occult from a very early age started doing card readings for people when I was about eight years old. So I was just always into it. Mm-hmm. I'm also, before I met the Elf Queen's Daughters, I was an initiate of three different types of yoga. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I was always pursuing that. In fact, the, when I first encountered the Elf Queen's Daughters, which was through a letter, I was working at a vegetarian restaurant, and around the corner from that restaurant was an occult bookstore, that I'd go to every day after I was off work, and there on the wall were these letters from the Elf Queen's Daughters, which I looked at and I thought, wow, I finally found my people. <laughs> and it's interesting how people end up doing that. You, you find, we all find our paths. Sometimes, as you said, you, don't, you have it young and you don't know it. And then sometimes it just kind of knocks you in the head and you go, oh, wow, there it is. You know, it's been there all along. And you just, you, it takes the longer time to find it. But I kind of believe that we find our path at the right time. It's not something that we necessarily have to start from birth. Um, we may not be ready to embrace a path until we're older and wiser, may hopefully. And so, you know, that's kind and, of... And people who are elven, for instance, they might not call themselves elven yet. They might call themselves star children or uh, space gypsies or any number of other things which are essentially mm-hmm. you know they can even, might call themselves um, freaks who knows or which is what people who are now called they call hippies but they usually call themselves freaks um, those are all kind of terms for elves in various ways Mm-hmm. Well, there's more than one name for just about anything that exists. So, you know, and you just have to you grab the one you resonate to and you call yourself who you feel you are. You know, it doesn't matter what other people think. It's just, that's it. If I say which, people go, <gasps> a lot, well, some people do. Not too much anymore. But, you know, it, it's just, I, I, on the one hand, I hate labels. I really do because then people expect you to be a certain way. 
But on the other hand, I think sometimes you just have to get it out there and, and be who you are. And that's how they learn the difference between their preconceptions and the reality. Mm-hmm. Yep. And that's, you know, most people live on preconceptions. The reality just doesn't know its, its way sometimes. Um, got another question from the chat room. Um, and it's kind of deals with what we're talking about. How do you know? I mean, how do you declare yourself an elf? And how do you know you are? Well, the of... knowing is pretty instinctual. You know, mm-hmm. you just either feel you are or you don't. Some people just just go, wow, I'm an elf. I, that's what I feel I relate to. That's the closest thing available in human society that really rings my inner bells. Mm-hmm. And it's possible that people have some other, you know, definition that we would also accept, but that, that's it. It's an instinctual uh, kinship to the idea. Mm-hmm. Um, as far as declaring yourself an elf, well, that's up to the individual. You can do it or not do it. I sometimes in this crazy world it's safer not to do it and we for the most part do it sometimes and don't do it others we don't go around declaring it all the time with some deep people it's much better to just hide your nature just go <laughs> by you know uh, a more normal seeming uh, mm-hmm. persona yep. but for those who are ready we will let them know that we're, we're elves mm-hmm. well yeah you have to choose who you, like in my case, you know, you have to choose who you come out of the broom closet to. You know, I mean, it's just, true. it's just, you just have to be. A I, bit I once went into a women's occult bookstore in Berkeley. Mm-hmm. As soon as I walked in the door, this woman walks up to me and says, there are no men allowed in here. And I said, I'm not a man, I'm an elf. And she looked <laughs> at me and she goes, oh, Okay. <laughs> very cool very cool see that's the kind of response you we, we hope to get sometimes but it's sometimes few and far between all right let's talk a bit, little bit about the the language um now you've it's got what thirty thousand words and yeah, thirty thousand plus words does your name sardoa mean any uh have a particular yes, meaning it does Mm-hmm. It does. It means ancient secret wonder. Wow. It's also, it's also formulated from a word associated with wizard. Mm-hmm. Okay. Now, um, e- there's even a page on the website where people can go to to get a sample of the language and learn words as well. Now, I just have to say this. Um, Michael Dorn, who played Klingon Worf on Star Trek, right, once, tri- right. one, once tried to teach me Klingon during an interview I was doing with him. <laughs> and I didn't do very well because there are a lot of guttural tones and clicks and odd noises that I just couldn't master. Um, is Arlen a difficult language to learn? Does it have its own alphabet? Uh, no, it, well, it has its own script. Uh, its alphabet mm-hmm. is more or less based upon English, but it uh, doesn't have some letters in it. Okay. Uh, it does, doesn't have an X. It would have a KS generally instead, or a Z. Mm-hmm. That's how X functions, either at the beginning of the word as a Z sound or at the middle or end of the word, word as a uh, KS sound. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it doesn't have that. It has uh, letters that the vowels are sometimes have a dot over them or two dots over them, which signify mm-hmm. different sounds. Right. It's a very vowel-oriented language. Mm-hmm. It, and, and as far as easy to learn, it, it kind of depends on... I mean, all languages are easier to learn when you're very young and it all becomes one language. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, our son was saying to us one day he has a niece who's um, Chinese, Japanese, and American, mm-hmm. and she she's, speaks 
English and Chinese and Japanese fluently, mm. you know, and he's wondering how she can do it. And I said to him, probably because for her, it's just all one language. It yeah. is three separate languages. It's mm -hmm. words all together as one thing. But when later, when you learn one language and then you want to learn another language, when you're older, you tend to separate them. Mm -hmm. I, w I went to military school with, with these boys from South America, and one of them one day, his mother called him up on the phone. She's speaking Spanish, naturally. Mm -hmm. And he said, for a minute, I had no idea what this woman was saying. And then suddenly Spanish clicked back in my brain, and I could speak it and hear. But he's so used mm -hmm. to being around English speakers. For a while, it was just a, a separate wall that mm -hmm. had been cut off for him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, it's yeah. If you talk, if you grow up with both and you speak both, it kind of they blend in. But yeah, as you said, learning one at a later age just kind of you know knocks you in the head so a little bit. When you when you're young, you know, having words like sushi or au revoir as you do, you know, you know immediately what those mean because they've mm -hmm. been incorporated into your language set. Mm -hmm. The whole language will become incorporated in that way, so you can pick and choose the words you use. Mm -hmm. Ervindasi, we do have a book called Ervindasi, which means silver speech, which is a short course in the magical language of the silver elves, and it teaches people how to speak Ervindasi in a kind of step-by-step -step fashion by replacing words as you go along in the exercises so that the actual lessons will incorporate the words that you've learned from the previous lessons. Mm -hmm. Well, that's a good way to learn. I was just on the website, and I was getting little bits of, of this, you do this, and this, you don't do that, and this sounds like this, and, and it kind of, my mind went blank, because there were there are a lot of rules. Well, and, all, yeah. all education takes time. Yes. It's yeah. just a matter of practice with anything you want to learn. You just, if you really want to, you just keep at it and you gradually gain skills in it. Mm -hmm. Language is no different in that way than horseback riding or some other skill. Exactly, exactly. Some people find it a little easier, of course, just as some, some of us might pick up skills at being a painter easier than other of us, but still if you, you follow the lessons and uh, practice them you'll develop mm -hmm. your skill exactly now is this do you speak it regularly no i don't i sometimes think about doing that but I really don't have anybody to speak it with so there mainly i use i use it for magic ah, when perfect. i'm doing when i'm doing particular spells or something i will translate them into Ervindasi, mm -hmm. so that becomes what, you know, probably would have called a barbarous language, but which we call <laughs> language, elegant, elven language, but it gives it that same sort of resonance that Latin used to give to the Catholic Mass before they right. abandoned it. Exactly, exactly. Well, when I asked for a review copy of your book, you were generous, and you sent me two others as well, and I just kind of want to tell everybody they're out there. Um, one is the Elf's Book of Cookery, um, Recipes for a Delighted Tongue, Healthy Body, and a Magical Life. And unless I uh, miss something, the recipes are all vegetarian, are they not, or 99% or well, vegetarian? They're, 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 yeah, 99% of them are yeah. vegetarian. We We acknowledge that there are people and, and elves sometimes who haven't gotten to the point of being vegetarian. I think mm -hmm. that is an evolutionary development, really, but there are people who aren't. And we ourselves are of the sort of people that if we go somewhere and someone serves us uh, meat, we'll eat the meat because that's what the host is serving us. We're not right. fanatics about it in any way, but mm -hmm. we, for the most part, are vegetarian and uh, thus, our recipes are based upon what we eat mm -hmm. and the things we've developed, and uh, we've put them out there. 
And some of them look absolutely delicious, and I'm going to try some because I, I really, I, I probably could easily be a vegetarian except for that craving for a hamburger every so often. You know, I mean, I would, I, I love grains and I love veggies and stuff and fruits. So, yeah, I'm kind of halfway there and sitting on the fence. Um, the other book that you sent was the keys to Elfin Enchantment, the the mastery of the fairy light through the portals of manifestation. In other words, it's basically elf and magic. And I'd like to talk about that because magic and enchantment are not the same things. Um, what's the difference between the two? Well, they they are the same and they aren't the same. Okay. In the sense that um, if you take Tolkien, uh, he wrote a thing called On Fairy Tales, which was a short little article that he uh composed ages ago in which he defined magic as the willful uh, dominance of life, trying to enforce your will on life, which many ceremonial magicians, that's what they're trying to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, In that sense, enchantment is different because enchantment isn't trying to dominate anything. It's trying mm-hmm. to enchant and, and persuade and delight so people willingly cooperate instead of have in some way being forced. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, magic as a word, we define in two ways. We accept Tolkien's kind of definition, using the will, and I guess Crawley would have this definition, using your will to mm-hmm. achieve what you want and so forth. But we mm-hmm. also see it as a... a super category above in which also magic and that kind of dominance magic and enchantment would be subcategories which is magic overall which is the whole idea of magic that incorporates the whole spectrum of magical things and enchantment would fall under that in our opinion yeah I mean enchantment is kinder and gentler isn't it kind of uh well, yes, I suppose in a sense it is. It's certainly more uh, of the tickle your fancy sort of thing. Mm-hmm. And 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 I think it's, it's, it's not forcing anything. Right. It's based totally on uh, consent and uh, people willing. Mm-hmm. It's the other person who wills. Mm-hmm. You get them to will to do what you wish. You don't press your will upon them, although it may be your will, but you're mm-hmm. not forcing it. Yeah, and, and... You're achieving their voluntary cooperation mm-hmm. through delight. Yeah. yeah, it doesn't include power over others or over things and, and using force. So, yeah, I mean, enchantment and enticement are kind of the same thing certainly, in a sense. Certainly. Yeah. So yeah, it, it just to me when I was reading that I'm thinking, oh, this is a sweet way. This is a kinder, gentler way, you know, and, and um you know, it, it just sounds so light and bright. I don't I can't explain it any other way. It just it there's a lightness about it. Um although although enticement and enchantment mm-hmm. then they're they're related, but enticement almost has a connotation of like uh, bribery or something <laughs> involved nope. with it. You know, there's you know some where, where enchantment doesn't necessarily have that. You, mm-hmm. just, you you just find it delighted. It's like hearing this song and you like, wow, I've I've just got to get that music. There's mm-hmm. no particular enticement other than your love of what you've heard mm-hmm. and the delight it's given you. Right, right. And I was reading one of the quotes in the book um, that starts out by saying that every time an elf speaks, he casts a spell. And, um, yeah, I mean, I, words words are magic. I mean, you know, whatever, whatever we speak has some kind of an effect. Um, yes, but, and it's not just the words, it's uh, the tone mm-hmm. that is magic. 
Mm-hmm. There's an underlying aspect to it. The words are important, but there's a tonal uh, resonance that's also significant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Sort of, sort of what McLuhan used to call uh, the medium is the massage. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, it is okay. You were mentioning and talking about spell work. Um, are your when you cast a spell? Are they similar things that we do? I mean, the same way. Do you use tools? Do you use herbs? Do you use whatever incense? Um, is it just kind of the same type of spell casting that witches would do? Sometimes. Okay. Sometimes it's just very ad hoc on the go, a simple spell cast, you know, with breath and fingers. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Just depends. We have more elaborate. Uh, We are avid avid students of magic, so we've studied uh, all kinds of magic, and I'm sure there's other varieties we haven't encountered yet, but if we do, we'll... Uh, check them out too, and uh, we've tried all sorts of things. Mm-hmm. Um, we use candles and incense and other things sometimes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It just depends on what we're doing. Yeah, well, I'm not one big. I'm not a big one on on high magic. You know, like high mass. Um, I, I like the the easier ways too. I mean, I and I think you can. Most people that use certain tools um, sometimes use them as a crutch or as uh, something to focus on you know like a wand you'll use it for focus not necessarily for like Harry Potter shooting sparks out of it or whatever but I think it's just as easy to say a few words even under your breath and be just as effective as doing ritualistic magic in some way and you have a chapter in the book on the power of belief and the dangers of doubt and this is pretty much what we teach um, in spell work too, because belief is a wonderful thing. Doubt will trip you up, right? It will. You've got to proceed with a certain amount of confidence. Mm-hmm. Because spells just don't really spells don't really work if you doubt that they're going to do it. I mean, we when we're doing a spell, we tell you to see it done as you're doing it don't there's no doubt that it won't happen you know as you're doing it and by the time you're done with the spell it's you in your mind you have to see that it's done well there's varieties there too the true mm-hmm. dra- true doubter doesn't do it the spell at all well just don't bother yeah those true. who doubt while they're doing their spell are kind of interfering with themselves and slowing themselves done, but this spell may still be fulfilled. It just may take longer and being a little interrupted on the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, we're all, I mean, spell work to me is eclectic. There is no right or wrong according to the person that's doing it. Um, you know, you try to set perimeters, you try to set rules, but nobody practices the same type of magic as the next person you know there's always going to be some differences because we're all individuals so you can't you know can't write it down and say this is how you're going to do it that's definitely the elven point of view Mm mm-hmm so yeah so you know whatever fits it's kind of like you know try on the shoes (laughs) what fits eventually works Um, I want to talk a little bit because in the the Book of Enchantment, um, you talk about the keys of enchantment, and I believe there are four keys. Can you kind of give us a a rundown on what that is, and they are? Well, actually, there's a bit much now to go into those specifically, except to say that uh, a number of years ago I was looking asking the spirits for some sort of sign and they gave me these uh, little kids toy which had four keys on it and a heart and I came to believe were the keys to enchantment Mm -hmm. Um, and I illuminate them in the book but I think it'd be too much to really go over them all right right here except say that um 
there's different ways, four primary ways, that we can develop ourselves, and self-development is uh, surely part of it, making yourself uh, the best you can be, uh, mm-hmm. is a great key to enchantment, always mm-hmm. improving yourself. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, so, and each chapter, there are four chapters that deal with each individual one, so... And, and it's thoroughly covered. And, and, I mean, the books are just, I mean, loaded with so much information. Um, my brain would hurt if I had to write one that that concise. I mean, it's, it's amazingly good in your explanations well, and everything that you cover. Thank you. We're just having fun doing it. I mean, we do it because it's uh, a pleasure for us to create the books. This is our... I guess you could call it a hobby in a way. It's just fun mm-hmm. for us uh, to do them, and we keep doing them for that reason. And because, of course, we get a response from elves who enjoy them. Mm-hmm. Well, they're very comprehensive. You can't, you can't take them too seriously. You can't take them like they're the absolute truth or a doctrine or dogma or something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> they need to be approached in such a way as the individual takes whatever they find within it and makes it their own. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. And and it, so they're kind of guidelines, and again, you, you kind of make up your mind of, of the things that resonate towards you and, and embrace those, and, and no matter what, you learn along the way, because you may learn, oh, well, that doesn't quite suit me, okay. So, you know, it, it goes back and forth, and it, it's really kind of nice. Um, I also want to talk a little bit about the elven tree of life eternal um yes how does this tree differ from maybe the trees of life in other cultures like the world tree in norse culture or the kabbalah tree the christian tree and the rest well i don't know that it primarily does uh, differ from them except for the fact that we just for the fun of it added extra uh, position an extra Sephiroth onto mm-hmm. the tree. Mm-hmm. And go ahead. It's it's just a theoretical formulation. Mm-hmm. Our tree, though, our tree of life eternal, is a book that's sort of like a choose your own adventure book. In the mm-hmm. sense, you go through it and you start at the bottom and you choose a path. And you go there, and then you have more choices, and go to the next place you choose, and more choices. And as you do so, you find out more and more about yourself and the type of magic that you're inclined towards, and uh, ultimately the type of elf fairy being you are. Mm-hmm. And you do have a book. I mean, it is a book of... of- that. Oh, yeah, it is, can... it's a book. It's also on our website for people who just would like to explore it there. But mm-hmm. we have a, a book of it, and it's not the type of book where you read it from cover to cover necessarily. It's the type of book where you it says, okay, if you make this choice, now go to page 134. Mm-hmm, and you exactly. go there, and you, see, you read it, and you find out what the next choices are. So as I said, it's like... The old choose your own adventure uh, books they used to have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and that it's it's in a way almost like a manual, in a sense that that you can look up specific yeah, it's, things. It's, it's it's very individual because each individual finds their own path within it. Mm-hmm. Oh, and that's very much like the tree of life that that. Um, the other ones do too. I mean, you start and then you just keep climbing up and up and and veering over where you need to go. You know, something you need to do. So yeah, I the the die the picture of it on the website reminded me of of the um, Kabbalah tree of life, but it well, did certainly. it looked a little bit different, just slightly. It has, it has an extra Sephiroth in there, uh, mm-hmm. but yeah, it is. It's set up like the Kabbalah, yeah, and. Um, the tree of life is the tree of life which means it doesn't belong to anyone it's the Mm -hmm. nature of life for all of us Mm -hmm. exactly 
Now, um, I'm just jumping back and forth here because there's just certain things that, that I think we should talk about. Um, do you go by the pagan wheel of the year, possibly to celebrate the Sabbaths or holidays, or do you have different holidays? Um, uh, well, there are some elves who follow Tolkien's uh, mm -hmm. formulation for holidays. Okay. Uh, we, are, we, we ourselves will celebrate anything. Mm -hmm. As long as there's food and drink and a good time involved, we'll help you celebrate. <laughs> if you're going to so, sit around and be too serious and pray, then probably we're going to duck out. But you know, right. as long as there's a good time involved, we'll be glad to help you. And uh, we'll help you with a little bit of magic if there's magic there. Mm -hmm. But Yeah, so you don't have like we, we set don't, we dates. Don't, we, no, we recognize the different uh, pagan holidays, but we mm -hmm. don't necessarily do an active celebration of them unless we're around some pagan who wants to celebrate them. <laughs> well, we're good at celebrating, too. We do a good job. <laughs> although, although, you know, Sowen and Yule, you know, are, yeah. and Beltane are big for us. Mm hmm Yeah. Yeah, well, the three, three of the major holidays, absolutely. Um, there's a lot to share in that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna have to jump back because in the chat room, um, Kimberl asked if I can ask you about the. Oh, I don't know if I'm gonna pronounce this right. Nez Touch Victory Level Seven, on the Tree of Life being connected to the elves and fairies. Well, um, it's all connected to the elves and the fairies. Uh, well, it also says Archangel Haniel is said to be connected to the Elven Fey realm, and that would connect the dots for many people. Well, I don't have a particular uh, thing to say about that, other okay. than that you, you, we we are part of life and a part of the universe, and therefore we're connected to the whole universe. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, there's, that's fair. There's no... There's no part of the tree of life which in its way couldn't be connected uh, to the elves and the fairy folk mm -hmm. it's a, you know it's it, we, we have a part of it like everybody else it's not a we're not a separate thing in that sense mm -hmm. right right that makes sense we're, we're an underlying aspect any more than magic really is separate than from the rest of the world. There's just part of the world that doesn't realize, recognize uh, magic. But to us, the whole world is magical, and everyone does magic even if they realize that or not. Mm hmm Yeah, that's absolutely true. I tell people, you know, when you were driving down the street the other day and you were mad at the driver in front of you and you called out a curse word well you know what you cursed him you know and that's practicing magic or if you're sitting there hoping for something and wishing for something well you're concocting a spell because you're getting it out to the universe of what you want so yes I believe everybody whether they know it or not does practice magic to some degree they do because well everyone who wants something everyone who wills something everyone who desires and acts upon that desire in some way, you know, is doing magic, which is nearly everyone. Mm -hmm. You might find a few beings who are just uh, like the fool in the tarot wandering around kind of clueless, but <laughs> and be, being as zen as they can be, just, you know, whatever happens to me, let it happen. I'm just going to be a pure and open soul and in the flow of the universe and... You know, but the rest of us are tending towards the magician side of things. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And then, you know, also the fool in the tarot on his journeys does pick up things and learns as he goes. So, I mean, that's, you know, hopefully people do too. Some don't, sadly, but I think most of us kind of pick up and learn and... and move on so well, this is well there's there's the fool in the sense of the person who is actually foolish mm -hmm. and there's the fool in the sense of the person who is uh, 
their naive. will is not to, yeah. their will is not to no their will is not to will mm-hmm. their will is to uh, just clear themselves as much as possible and mm-hmm. allow right okay that makes good sense now over the years I was reading this this is kind of amazing um, you've given out about 6,000 elven names to interested individuals and you're still doing that and there is an email address where people can contact you to have you do that for them um, yeah. if I'm not mistaken it's a matter of answering three questions so you kind of get to know who the person is um, you can better acquaint yourselves with those who wish one. Um, so, well, what the name, is the names oh, we ahead. give are based upon? Sorry, the names we give are based upon the information they give us. Mm-hmm. We don't just make one right. totally up out of the blue. We take right, the exactly. information they give us and use that to formulate their name. Mm-hmm. So, if um, anybody is interested in doing that, and and I might mention that you do it for free. Um, what is the email address that they need to ask for one and answer these questions? Well, they should just go to our main site, which is silverelves.angelfire.com. No www in there, uh, just that. And that'll take them to the main site. And then right at the top, it'll I think it'll have a button say, do you want an elven name? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And click on that easy enough to do um, all right let me just make sure that everything is getting asked and answered properly as we go um, okay one more question from Kimberl he says um, what do you feel about global warming information wiped off the government database do you feel this correlates to this elven energy coming in fast well, I'm not sure how you'd correlate it to that other than some people are reacting to the uh, the influx of information and intelligence in a negative way. I think it's a little sad to remove the information from the government website, but at the same time, you know, you can ignore reality, but it's still going to come around and slap you in the face sooner or later. It's just, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And you can pretend it doesn't exist, and you can try and will it out of existence, but nature is nature, and it's the power that magic is based upon, uh, not the other way around. We're using nature to achieve our will and aims, and it's... Uh, a lot more powerful than the rest of us. Mm-hmm. Of course, who knows? Maybe all those uh, people who are denying global warming or global cli- climate change will eventually transport themselves to another world, which is, I think, what they believe. They mm-hmm. believe there's going to be a rapture one day, and they're going to go to uh, take it up somewhere else and live in paradise so they don't really need to worry about global climate change. Mm-hmm. Although I think their motivations are that they want business to be able to actively pollute as much as and do what they want as much as possible as long as they can to make as much money as they can because that's what they really care about. Yeah. Yeah, our planet's in trouble. Um, definitely in trouble. And I don't know. I don't know where it's going to end, but, you know. We'll find out eventually, I guess. Well, it's going to end when the sun uh, becomes a supernova, and but by then, hopefully, we'll be flying around in space in our own little mini Earths and uh, be elves in space, which there we actually go. are now, way more in space. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, we're going to run out of time, so let me. Let me just get in where people can find you and stuff because, all right, so the Elven Path is a path of love and magic, and you share your way with all sincerely interested individuals. So where can they find out more? I know you gave it away already, but um, give the website again where they can find about more about the Elven Path and how to get in touch with you if they have questions. Okay, well, there's 
Again, the website is Silver Elves, all lowercase, dot angelfire dot com, C O M. And uh, they can also find us on Facebook. Yeah. Uh, there I'm having to put myself as Michael J. Love because Facebook has required that of me. <laughs> uh, but you'll find all kinds of elven stuff posted there regularly. Mm hmm. And where can people find your books? Our books are on Amazon. We have 37 books are currently available on Amazon, and wow. probably in another month we'll have number 38 that we're currently writing, but I'm only a few days away from uh, the, finishing the first draft, and then I'll have to do all the proofreading again. But um, we're getting close to number 38. Wow. <laughs> so, and Amazon you know, carries them mostly, but they can be found in other places. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, Amazon is kind of the go-to place, and that's... It, it is. You yeah. know, some people don't like it for some reason, and there are alternatives for them, but mm -hmm. uh, Amazon is the easiest place to look them all up, and that way, other than our website, we have pages on our website that uh, show the books and describe the books so people right. can see which ones uh, call to them. Mm hmm well, I want to thank you for joining me tonight, Sardo, and I'm, I'm going to wish everybody my usual closing for tonight. But before I do, can you please give a good night blessing in Arvindasi? Well, we all say, Tase ina namel ripton lina froha, but that means go with a star upon your brow. Oh, I like that. Say it one more time, please. Tase ina namel riptolina froha. Perfect. And I want to thank everybody for listening in as well. And until next time, everybody, blessed be and merry meet again. <laughs> Good night. This has been another edition of Stirring the Cauldron with Marla Brooks. Be sure to tune in next week at this same time for another great guest and more cauldron stirring. Any rebroadcast or other use of this program without explicit permission is strictly prohibited. Copyright 2014. Moonlight Hall by Kevin McLeod. Licensed through Incompetech.com.